Good morning to all. To precise a little bit, we are a group of young activists who have studied Jean Jaurès, uh, something very little known. But uh, in order to deal with today's challenges and from the standpoint of the decisive moment of the 20th century, where not only was he murdered, but where humanity fell into a new barbary, that of the war of trenches and of ideologies. Ladies and gentlemen, why are we gathered here today? What is the basis of this drive of the BRICS for a new paradigm of those real, very real infrastructural projects which are emerging throughout the world as a, at breathtaking speed? It's nothing more than an idea, a very small idea, which even though infinitesimal, is uplifting men, shifting mountains, and very soon change the universe itself, if one uh, thinks to the projects of the new Silk Road and of the lunar program. This idea, however, could have never sprung from the pragmatic souls, from the realistic minds, such as those of our Western leaders presently. Why? Because they have been programmed to reason in terms of a given system of its geopolitics, its debates, its debts, its contracts, uh, its relations of powers between dominant and dominated. And because uh, those Western politicians only reason in terms of what they see, as a, uh, in terms of what exists already and that which is past already. Without imagination, therefore, without the power of the mind uh, to uh, and its capacity to move us beyond the present and beyond matter, the future is condemned. Condemned. The challenge for a civilization is thus to give it back its part of ideal, its part of infinity, a very difficult thing to do within the context of this materialistic, violent and sexual counterculture where man is reduced to a state of an animal determined only by his passions and his senses. And it's uh, very difficult here, in particular in France, the country of Cartesian do doubt, where the only alternative to this bestialization is not the ideal, but the impotent prison of mathematical abstraction and analysis. The French are very well known for their rabid criticisms and their commentaries on reality, but they do not act. In short, to give back to man its full humanity and capacity to transform and create the conditions of the future, he must bring harmony to his emotions and his reason and recreate the faculty of imagination. This is the role of art, something which Friedrich Schiller has developed magnificently of philosophy and science uh, in Leibniz. But is this something that can be realized also through politics? Uh, the response is yes. And the proof is uh, the struggle of uh, Jean Jaurès, a political figure who was indeed inspired by Leibniz and by Schiller. Jean Jaurès. It is well known that Jean Jaurès was murdered for having attempted to stop World War I, that war where the great powers ripped themselves apart because, like today, they were on the verge of forming a new alliance, a new model for peace and progress, and because the British Empire saw that process as a danger for its own power. In the beginning of the century, as France, Russia and Germany, thanks to certain of their elites, such as Gabriel Anoto, Sergei Witt, uh, had laid through the construction of the Trans-Siberian Railway and earlier on the Berlin-Baghdad Railways, the foundations for the new Silk Road. Yet dark clouds in the horizon hovered first over France before moving on to Germany in the 1930s and to Italy and Germany. The same clouds of which Jaurès said capitalism carries with him, within itself the germ of war like the rain clouds carry thunderstorms. Jaurès was born in 1859, the year where uh, on the origin of the speci species of Darwin was published. In this essay, Darwin developed his famous doctrine of evolution. However, is this theory 
uh, of the survival of the fittest, not the perfect justification of the oligarchic principle of social triage, of which British liberalism and Malthusian, Malthusianism are so fond of. Just prior to that, Gobineau, a Frenchman, had published, and I quote, the, an essay on the inequality of human races. Thus, at the end of the 19th century, a fad developed in France among the distinguished and intellectual French circles, uh, on, which aim is to identify the races according to human morphological traits. It is thus that left-wing so-called French anthropologist, Vachet de la Pouge, who liked to measure the skulls of men in order to justify the thesis developed in his book, The Aryan and its Social Role, provided already then the main arguments of Nazism. There are no rights of men, he said, not more than rights of the tattoo or of eatable beef. These are only forces. Fraternity is all right, but woe to the losers. Life can only be maintained by death. To live, one has to kill, kill in order to eat. What is the common basis of all those doctrines which created the perfect grounds for anti-Semitism and the anti-German revanchism which emerged in France in those years? It was a fixed and material vision of man defined only by his body, by his, by his organic material, his physical relations to the world, a world itself totally arbitrary, a negation thus of the human mind, of its capacity to change to discover, to create, and to, and to go for transcendence. This situation is further aggravated by the rule of positivism, a doctrine founded by the French Auguste Comte, who chopped history in predetermined ages, negating the role of uh, human will and of ideas. First, uh, he says there's three ages, two naive ages, the theological age of the Middle Ages, and the metaphysical age of the Renaissance, and a third one, the modern rational age, the age of positivism, where a so-called science inherited from the Enlightenment finally rules. And that objective science, who understood apparently that since Newton and Descartes, uh, the world is totally dependent on matter, there would be no sense, no God, no unity. And the world being chaotic, one cannot apprehend it except by approximation, only relying on facts accumulated through our own sense perception and solely sense perception. In short, since ideas do not exist and that one cannot access the causes of things, one is incapable of making any discovery and we, in that context, not even the universal gravitation invisible to our senses could not have been discovered. And the other thing is that according to that vision, one cannot change the world. Yet, in the Jaurès times, the working class parties and the political entourage of Jaurès uh, will be deeply hampered by this incredible for a revolutionary left-wing parties. For Jules Ferry, for instance, uh, the one who one celebrates in France for his defense of a secular education, I quote, one does not revolt against what is, one does not substitute in social practice what could be uh, to what there is. The concentration of capital is a certain fact. One does not engage against this general tendency, which operates like a mechanical force, an impossible and ridiculous str struggle. Similar for the Marxists, since they defend a materialist concept of history, having, according to them, its own internal logic, they de facto condemn the individual and the proletariat to be nothing but objects of forces and of a class struggle which transcends them. In those conditions, progress is both impossible and fiercely rejected, to such an extent that in 1911, uh, the, those close to Maurras of the extreme right wing and of Georges Sorel, uh, a self-defined Marxist, said in France, and I quote, in order to save the civilization, the first animal to kill is the belief in progress, in that optimism which generated the sinister farce of the French Revolution of 1789. Difficult in those conditions to envisage any other solution than that of all against all, a struggle for the vital space, something which should make us reflect upon those politically correct myths circulating today, which negate the creation of new resources and promote theories of 
degrowth and of green energies. It is thus, in the name of progress, and to give back to the world and to man the right to infinity, the right to create and to generate ideas to ensure the, the future, that Jaurès will lead his political and philosophical struggle against the beginnings of fascism. His doctoral dissertation, entitled On the Reality of a Sensuous Word, World, was prepared under the direction of a Leibnizian philosopher, where he attacked positives, positivist and materialist, but also the idealist so-called and the formalist for being just as dangerous because the idealist condemned reality to being a vain illusion and the formalist for reducing it to the dryness of a logical construction. His aim was to show the scientific rather than the ideological character of progress as being integral part of nature and of human nature. He proved that there is a permanent interaction between the living and the thinking, between ideas and things, allowing the constant creation of always superior forms of existence. Thus for Jaurès, and I quote, for all the living, the problem of the infini infinite is fully posed at whatever the period of the universe they emerged. The sum of movements in the world is an acting infinite where mathematics does not have its place. One should not consider the universe and its movements and energies as an unending budget. Here, it is not the resources that measure the expenses, it is rather the infinity of the work to be accomplished which provides for a corresponding infinity of resources. This was an attack on the partisans of austerity budget ruling today in Washington and Brussels. And this is fully coherent with his political and parliamentary struggle, according to which, and I quote, every individual has the right to full growth. He has thus the right to demand from humanity all that he needs to second, second this effort. And indeed, against capitalism and usury, Jaurès will defend the idea of national credit a credit, democratic credit, credit of a public bank issuing credit currency to service the future productive needs of the nation, which will be finally realized under General de Gaulle in the 30 glorious years after World War II. But let us reflect upon this passage of his thesis, which is very polemical from a philosophical, philosophical standpoint, but especially in France, but fundamental. It is after the beginning of chapter third, when after having descended layer by layer from reality to molecules and to small atoms, in the infinitely small of matter, he concludes, Science itself, when seeking for the support of material movement and for the last element of matter, leads us to a reality which has nothing material to, left to it, which cannot be perceived by the senses, which only exists for the mind. Comparing his exploration to that of Virgil and Dante, who, having taken another road to leave the depth of Inferno and, and uh, in, in the Divine Comedy, and finally, finally rediscovered the stars, Jaurès says, guided by science, we continue to descend always further, always lower in the depth of matter, and there also, in those dangerous abysses where one could wonder whether all would not dissolve in blind fa fatality, we found movements superposed, circles and whirlpools, and at the opposite opening of those abysses, we also rediscover the stars, the, the mind. Let me now make a little detour to uh, the great phys physicist Max Planck, to whom we owe the discovery of the quantum. This is what he declared at the end of his life in the 30s, as the materialist and utilitarian conception of man was coming to its apogee in Germany with the horrors that, uh, that we know. And uh, I quote, Max Planck, as a physician who committed his entire life to a sober science, the study of matter, I am surely free of any suspicion that could make of me a fanatic. And so, I affirm on the basis of my research on the atom that there is no matter in itself. All matter does not emerge or exist 
qui met en place une force 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 qui met en force qui met en place une force qui met en force qui met en place une 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 force qui met en fait, si l'on y réfléchit, Indeed, if one reflects upon this well, a paradox surrounds us permanently, and is something that Jaurès will not hesitate to use during a debate against uh, the son-in-law of Marx, Paul Lafargue, in a debate published under the heading Materialism and Idealism in the Concept of History. Le paradoxe est le suivant. The paradox is the following. How can one brain itself generate new ideas, new dis uh, discoveries, if the origin of those ideas were not to be found in the mechanical cogs of matter, chemical reaction after chemical reaction. How can our brain itself generate new ideas? Jaurès responded. Et je cite. And this is a quote. If I am saying these words at this moment, it's because the idea that I'm expressing at this very minute arose lengthily from a prior idea and from a series of all prior ideas. But it is also because I want to realize in the future that I see before me an aim, an intention, an end. And thus my present thought, while it seems to be determined by the series of past thoughts, has been also provoked by an idea of the future. Et il Yet, en fait, it is the same with history. Et en même While temps, one can explain all the historical phenomena by pure economic evolution, you can also explain them by the restless and permanent desire of humanity of a higher form of existence. Before the experience of history, before the constitution of such and such economic system, humanity carries in itself a pre-established idea of justice and of right, and it is this preconceived idea that it pursues from a former civilization to a superior form of civilization. Alors, mesdames, messieurs, Ladies and gentlemen, ideas are not social conventions. They are not pure inventions of the brain or of human society. They are not either detached entities from the real world. They are natural in the sense that the universe, for its own needs, to continue its task of creation of the world, generates them through the human mind. Alors, Yet, what is this idea that is at the origin of the foundation of the BRICS movement and the new Silk Road? This idea is that of progress. Progress to go beyond the borders of the known. And how will it be ensured? By mutually assured creativity and human discovery. We absolutely need to win the struggle of Jaurès. If not, Besoin de réussir le combat. Once again, humanity si will be destroyed, l'humanité s'anéantira, and with it, the world. Merci et merci pour ce que vous ferez. Thank you, thank you very much for what you do.